The long-term goal of Oros is to get to parity with gasoline. Gas motors are very inefficient. Electric motors are very efficient. Lithium-ion batteries today just don't compare to gasoline, and so we're trying to close that gap and enable some of these transportation technologies to transition to batteries. Our first cells will be somewhere between two to three times the energy stored per kilogram as today's lithium-ion batteries, and so your car will go two or three times as far. Hi everyone, I'm Suzette Leboy with Opportunity Miami, and today we're gonna to be talking with battery startup Oros Energy that's looking to really transition us to a cleaner mobile future. And for that, we are joined by founder Ethan Lusbrock. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great. We talk a lot about transportation here when we uh -huh. talk about a cleaner future in right. terms of our carbon emissions, the buses, the cars that we use, but your company is really looking to kind of change that in a right. very positive way. So first, why focus on battery life? What's the problem that we have with these batteries? The main issue is that they just don't store enough energy, whether you're trying to pull like a, you know, a semi-trailer or uh, whether you're trying to you know, power a, a 747 jet. Lithium-ion batteries today just don't compare to gasoline, and so we're trying to close that gap and uh, enable some of these transportation technologies to tr transition to batteries. So we're talking like EVs and everything in between, or what? Can you like yeah. almost list them for us? The big ones, yeah, are, are EVs, like semis, aviation, like large marine transportation, mm -hmm. uh, but also there's sort of an explosion of small types of transportation. So any variety of drones, both uh, aerial and underwater. There's all sorts of like e-mobility types of transportation that people are continuing to uh, create new forms of, whether it's a, you know, a one-wheeler or a scooter or a electric motorcycle or something like that. So you can do all sorts of new things with better batteries as well um, that maybe weren't possible with small gasoline engines. So everything from small ways of getting around to the big semi trucks. I right. mean, I, I see Amazon trucks all the time now that are supposedly EV. Yeah. yeah. Um, so are they using these types of batteries? Is that what you were telling me? Yeah. So um, Amazon gets a lot of electric Sprinter vans from Rivian. Uh, they're all lithium ion chemistries, and especially for them when they're making like lots of stops, mm. having something that isn't burning gas while you're stopping all the time is, is a, a big benefit. And then there's like the obvious like pollution benefits as well. Introduce us to Oros Energy. So, you know, I know you started pretty recently in 2022, but can you yep. kind of give us the background of how you started? Sure. So my background is chemical engineering. Um, I had worked at a couple of battery startups previously and uh, did some research at MIT and uh, sort of loosely related related to the the research I did at MIT um, was work on cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. So there's the positive and negative electrode in a battery. The cathode is the positive side. Today they're sort of the the bottleneck in terms of getting to higher, uh, more energy stored per kilogram. And so today's cathodes only store about half as much as the anodes or the negative side. Uh, and so if you can bring that to parity or, or uh, even increase it above the anode uh, energy storage capabilities, then you can really unlock like new uh, applications. You either can s store like the same amount of energy with less weight, mm -hmm. or you can have the same weight and more energy, or you can do some something in between. So that sort of paradigm sort of allows you to do new things that you weren't able to before because you didn't have enough energy or you had too much weight. So you started in 2022, you had, you know, you had mentioned to me, you had a, I believe it was one prototype, and then do you wanna just kind of give us like the transition of from one to what, more than a dozen you have now? Yeah, so we, uh, let's see, we, I think we've made like 50 to 100 prototypes now. So they, these are very small demonstrator cells uh, basically just to test the materials. I've gotten really good results from the, those, both in how much energy you can store and then how fast that, so with lithium ion batteries, the amount you start with is fades every time you charge it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's called your 
uh, your retention or your cycle life. We, we have really good numbers on cycle life as well. Um, and then the last like relevant metric is, is like power. It's like how fast can you pull out that energy? And the numbers look good, good there as well. So. so where are you guys now in terms of the prototype phase and testing? So, so now we're actually working with a contract manufacturer to develop like our first commercial cells to start selling. So we're sort of, we've done the initial testing and now it's just putting it to practice in a commercial format and doing all the relevant like testing and certifications for different applications. And is there a particular part of the industry that you're focused on first? Yeah, so aerospace is our initial focus. There's sort of two parts to that. One is like bigger electric aerospace vehicles like electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles or sort of flying taxi, flying car type things. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is drones. The main reason we're focused on aerospace initially is the weight is, is the most important metric for them. So anytime they can shave off weight, they're, they're happy to do so and they'll pay a premium to do so. So let's get into a little bit of your background. So you, you, know, you mentioned you're from originally from where? Minnesota. And you went to Boston, yep. uh, which pretty, has a pretty interesting and diverse or um, robust innovative kind of scene. Absolutely. And then you come to Miami, yeah. which has a growing tech scene. Can you kind right. of explain why Miami? Um, yeah, I think I think we were making an early bet on on Miami as a tech ecosystem, and I've felt like in my visits that it's an extremely business friendly community. People really want innovation and and uh, technology businesses to to come here and are willing to support them in various ways. And so I think it's a very they have the the foundation of a, a great tech e ecosystem. You were mentioning earlier at the conversation, you know, your background, what you did at MIT, what you studied. Yeah. But is there like another reason of why lithium batteries? Like, why are you focused on that so much? There's, it's like the intersection of a lot of things for me. So there's like a decarbonization angle and that like batteries are just basically not good enough for a lot of applications today. Like you can create things that would make me excited to be alive uh, in the future if you have better batteries. So flying cars is, is a easy example where like, I think we should have that. We should absolutely pursue that. And if batteries are a, a, a key unlock for them, then uh, I think it's necessary to build those batteries. So it's a, it's a climate sustainability angle, but obviously economically a no-brainer almost. Yeah, like This is yeah. the future, right? So why not tap into it now? Yeah, it's just like I, I'd rather like figure out ways to be optimistic about the f future and tr do my part to like try and bring about that future. Yeah, and a big part of that future, and I don't want to be pessimistic here, but you know, Florida may have a great number of EVs on the road, and I feel mm -hmm. like I see a million Teslas every few minutes um, in my neighborhoods and streets, but we even Miami kind of lags behind the rest of Florida, for instance, in EV adoption. Mm -hmm. And granted, the county and the city is, they're pushing hard for this transition to a cleaner future, but we are still pretty behind considering what other major metropolitan areas are doing in terms of transportation. Right. Um, and again, this, this cleaner transportation future. But how do you think Oros can speed things up for us here in Miami? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think like there's, Different places have approached it different ways. So a lot of people have government programs to do that. Um, I think Oros is an attempt to sweeten the deal economically and just uh, practically. And so if your electric vehicle has more range than your gas vehicle and and you can and you can charge it at home and, and you don't have to worry about like how many superchargers are around, it looks a lot like a lot better of a deal because your per mile cost is lower, your maintenance costs are lower. And so if you can sort of get over the, those last few trade-offs between EVs and gas vehicles, I think you'll see a lot more people switch. Well, at least change the, the narrative that, because I think that's a big part of the reason why EV adoption just isn't really taking off as it should be here mm -hmm. in, in South Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like there's a convenience trade-offs, like if you want to go on a long road trip, like you have to either buy like a top of the line EV or uh, really like, route your map. Your, yeah, exactly. Your map out your, but 
We're getting there. I've heard recently that, you know, extreme temperatures are an issue for batteries in terms of, you know, failing due to these high temperatures. Are you kind of utilizing Miami as like a test ground for how these batteries will uphold to um, extreme heat? We, we haven't done like uh, field testing for auto automotive yet, but um, it's definitely on our roadmap. A lot of that comes down to like engineering the batteries. Like batteries sort of like to sit in a around room temperature and so if you get too cold or too hot, um, it like can damage the battery. But there's ways of uh, engineering just both how you charge and discharge the battery and then uh, like cooling and heating systems that can minimize those, uh, those challenges. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the future now. So I know you're still a relatively new company, um, but you did recently secure a $3 million fund, yep. uh, which is great to hear. What's next for Oros then? Yeah, so next is basically scaling up our materials manufacturing and then uh, utilizing our contract manufacturing partner to start making and selling batteries. How um, soon do you expect that? So we'll have commercial sales by the end of the year is, is what we have planned right now. For certain applications, we'll have to do some certification, so it'll be early next year for those applications, but um, for drones, they don't have as many requirements. So we'll be able to start selling drone batteries this year. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and where do you see Oros having the most immediate or the biggest impact? Ooh, um, I, th I think the the air taxi is probably the most immediate, like the, the biggest delta between your, your life today and what will it will, it'll be in a few years. Today, air taxis can do like 100, 150 miles of range. So that's really only enough for within a city. So they're sort of competing with like taxis and Ubers, but we think we can push it to three, 400 miles. And so you can start to do like short, uh, short mm -hmm. like between city routes. So Boston to New York or Tampa to Miami or something like that. Right. And uh, instead of having to, you know, either drive like four hours or uh, take a sh short flight. Hopefully we, we can uh, sidestep the TSA lines that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the county is also pushing hard for that. I mean, there's already a few eVTOL based companies in Miami, or yeah. at least have some sort of footprint here. Right. Um, and there are some discussions of figuring out how do we do it from the airport to some of these other areas like yeah. Miami Beach, right? It'd be great for traffic too, yeah. Yeah, like especially on the bridge and, and uh, like, the worst times of the day, I think that would be great for the city. Fewer cars on the road, yeah. Yep. So it's a win-win for all. How do you see Miami of 2040 in terms of battery adoption? Yeah, I think 2040, like uh, your cell phones will last longer, your EVs will go farther. Barring any regulatory issues, I think air taxis will be everywhere. Uh, I think there's a lot of like fun stuff you can do with electric uh, recreational uh, like watercraft and things like that, jet skis, boats. Do you think Miami's gonna be kind of a major player for all of that then? I think so, yeah. Like there's uh, a lot of disposable income here and so people want new toys. I mean, the, lo the long-term goal of Oros is to get to parity with gasoline. So mm. gas, gas motors are very inefficient, electric motors are very efficient. You don't need batteries that are the same uh, like energy storage as as gasoline, you just need to close that delta because uh, the the mo electric motors will make up for the rest of it. Our first cells will be somewhere between two to three times the energy stored per kilogram as today's lithium ion batteries, and so it's like a straight extrapolation. So your phone will last twice or three times as long. Your car will go two or three times as far. At the bare minimum, minimum, it'll unlock new functionality for our devices. All right, so Ethan, thank you so much for joining us. It was yeah. a pleasure. Thanks for having me.